We welcome you once again to Smart Agro Innovation, your channel that gives simple ideas in the field of agriculture. Today, you are welcome once again to the Farmers Lecture Room. We are going to direct our topics on farm management, episode 2. And our main subtopic will be crop rotation. If you want to manage your farm, to the extent that you want to control pests and diseases and then improve the soil fertility, then you have to go for crop rotation. Crop rotation simply means the growing of different kinds of crops on the same piece of land from year to year in a rotational or sequential order. I still repeat, crop rotation involves the growing of different kinds of crops on the same piece of land in a sequential or rotational order. When you go into agriculture or crop production, you realize that crop rotation play a major role in maintaining the soil fertility, also controlling pests and diseases, infestation and harbor on the same piece of land. To explain to the understanding of a layman, then if you want to do crop rotation, for example, let's say you have yam, maize and cowpea. You have to rotate its production on the same piece of land from year to year. So let's say you have a one or one to three year uh, crop rotation period. All that you have to do is that if let's say you have maize, yam, and then cowpea, all that you have to do is that from the first year, you plant your maize after harvesting. The second year, you plant your yam because the maize is a shallow rooted crop and the yam is a deep rooted crop and then also on the third year then you plant your cowpea the cowpea is known to improve the nitrogen level of the soil and that is what is important before i go in there let us look at the principles of crop rotation if you want to grow your crops rotationally, that will help you to control pests and diseases and then also improve the soil fertility, then these are the principles that you need to take into consideration. One, you need to plant disease-free varieties. Two, shallow rooted crops should be followed by deep rooted crops. Three, Crops from the same family should not be planted together. And then, four, leguminous crops like cowpea and beans must also be part of the rotation in order to improve the soil fertility. When all these are being achieved, then you are good to go. So, for example, if you are able to follow all these principles, the importance of crop rotations are as summarized below. Now, if you practice crop rotation, these are the merits that you will get at the end of the day. One, since you plant deep rooted crops being followed by shallow rooted crops it makes efficient utilization of the soil two planting leguminous crops also helps to improve the fertility of the soil by improving the nitrogen level of the soil three planting different crops from different families helps to distort the pests 
and diseases cycle on the field. For example, if crops from the same family, if you look at certain crops like okra and um, tomato, they are being affected by a simple pest that is white flies, also flea beetle, that is the podagrica species, which normally makes perforations in the leaves, reduces photosynthesis activities. So, these crops that can be attacked by this, almost the same pest or disease shouldn't be planted in the rotation together. If not, let's say if you plant okra this year, by all means, there is going to be infestation of white flies over there and also podagrica species, which is the flea beetle. Once they are there and in the following year you plant tomato, it means that they still have their species there and they will definitely cause great havoc or incident or severity on the field. So such crops shouldn't be planted continually or shouldn't be planted together. If not, it is going to also multiply the, the population of pests on the field, which is very detrimental to the growth of our plants. So if you want to practice crop rotation, then all that you need to do is to plant crops which are not in the same family in order to distort the diseases cycle. Crop rotation also helps to improve the fertility of the soil. Therefore, it is very appropriate to practice crop rotation. So if you have a small piece of land, let's say an acre or two, you have to rotate it. You shouldn't plant a particular uh, crop, such as, let's say, tomato. First year you plant tomato, second year you plant tomato, third year you plant tomato. If you do that, then indeed, you are going to deplete your soil and then moreover, you are also going to increase the population of pests in that particular environment and it will not help the growth of your plant and normally uh, they will cause economic damage to your crops and it will lead into losses. On this note, that is the end of our crop rotation class. If you have any question, please kindly um, Highlight them in the comment box so that we all dialogue over it. Thank you very much for watching. This is Smart Agro Innovation. My name is Anthony Bedu, the main brain behind Smart Agro Innovation. God bless you for watching. Please, if today is the first day of watching us, please kindly subscribe to our channel. Share to farmers' friends so that they can also be inspired and see what is happening in the field of agriculture in a very simple way. So despite the numerous merits or advantages or importance of practicing crop rotation, another disadvantage also await us. Whichever thing you do, I tell you in the field of agriculture, you need to outweigh the two. You have to know the advantages and the disadvantage. And if the advantages outweigh the disadvantage, then you go for it. Despite preaching and talking about crop rotation, there are some demerits or disadvantages. These disadvantages, I think through my experience in the field of agriculture, uh, they are very small in number. And I think that we will direct our um, focus on the fact that practicing crop rotation requires um, at least a large plot of land, a very large one, so that you really um, achieve what you want to achieve. Apart from that, crop rotation, if you want to practice crop rotation, it should be practiced by a farmer who really knows much about agronomy. Because you must have information on every single crop that you want to um, produce. So that you know that, um, let's say if you pick tomato, if you pick okra, um, what are some of the crop pests that attack them. You should have information on all this so that they will give you directions. So, the only two disadvantages is that it requires a large plot of land and then also 
the farmer must also be knowledgeable in almost all the crops that he or she wants to do with.